just a scrap of paper with a few lines of writing on it. There's a person we know of who paid $10,000 for it. Why? Hello, creeps. This is Peter Laurie opening the doors of the mystery playhouse. See, tonight, we've really got something for you. You're going to hear an exciting version of Somerset Moon's classic story, The Letter. Come with me to Singapore, pre-war Singapore, meeting place of a hundred races. Singapore, where the sun beats down fiercely and passionately, the crowded streets glittering in a stifling heat. But in the law office of Edward Joyce, it is pleasantly cool. Cool, that is until the ringing of the phone, heralding the events that were to set fire to Mr. Joyce's conscience, burning their lesson into his memory forever. Hello. Hello, Joyce. Hmm? This is Robert Crosby. Listen, listen. Something terrible has happened. Well, now, take it easy, Robert. Nothing's worth getting excited about in this heat. But they put Leslie in jail. What? What'd you say? I know it sounds insane, but they've locked her up. Well, now, wait a minute. Now, calm down. What's all this nonsense about? What's Leslie charged with? Murder. Murder? They say she killed Jeff Hammond. Well, that's fantastic. But she admits it. That's what's so crazy about the whole thing. Listen, Joyce, will you meet me right away before I go out of my mind? I'll see you in ten minutes, here at the office. And don't worry. If Leslie's innocent, we'll straighten this ridiculous affair out in no time. Now, go on with your story, Robert. Uh, Jeff Hammond came to your bungalow while you were away. He made advances to Leslie, and she shot him. Now, you go on, please. But that's all there is, Joyce. What? That's, that's what's so insane about the whole thing. We'd known Hammond for years. His, his plantation was right next to ours. We often had him out, out to dinner, and... Well, he always seemed such a decent chap, I just can't understand how he could have acted that way. He must have been mad. I see. Well, then, it's a clear case of self-defense, and you've nothing to worry about if your wife is telling the truth. What the devil do you mean? Now, don't get excited, Robert. Now, suppose Leslie were trying to protect someone. But why? Uh, someone she loves. You. What? Uh, well, perhaps Leslie thinks that you killed Hammond. But why should I shoot Hammond? Well, perhaps you were jealous of him. Perhaps you found them together. Perhaps. Oh, you... that's ridiculous, Joyce. I wasn't even home that night, and I can prove it. Oh, you weren't. Well, then we must accept Leslie's story. Of course. Leslie's never even looked at another man since we were married. We've been very happy. Everything was perfect until this horrible thing happened, and now... I tell you, I don't know what I'd do if I lost Leslie. Don't worry, Robert. We'll do everything we can. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to visit the jail and get the facts from Leslie herself. Mrs. Crosby... I am uh, Edward Joyce. Your husband has retained me for your case. Oh. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Joyce? How do you do? Robert's spoken to me of you often. Uh, there are a few questions which I'd like to ask you. I realize that it's difficult for you to talk about it, but... It's quite all right, Mr. Joyce. I don't mind answering any questions. Splendid. Now, I want you to tell me exactly what happened that night. Very well. Robert had gone to Singapore on business... And I was alone for the night. Jeff dropped in for a visit, and we talked and had a few drinks. After a while, he... Well, he began to act very strangely. And then I was surprised to... to hear him say... Leslie, don't you know that I'm awfully in love with you? I don't believe you. But no, I don't even want you to say it. May I have another drink? I wouldn't drink any more if I were you. Do you think I said I loved you because I'm drunk? Well, that's the most obvious explanation, isn't it? No. I've wanted to tell you for a long time. And now that Bob isn't here, this is my chance. Jeffrey, I think you'd better go. I'm not going. Look at me, Leslie. Jeffrey, you're making a fool of yourself. Don't you know that I've never loved anyone but Robert? You love me. 
You know you do. Let go my arm. I've wanted to do this for a long let time. Let go of me, you're drunk. I'll never let you go. I'll make you forget, Robert. Stop that, you're squeezing the breath out. I wanted to kiss your mouth, your eyes, your hair. Let me go, Jeffrey. Where do you think you're taking me? Don't fight me, Leslie. You know you love me. No, you touch me again. What are you doing at that desk? Get away from there. There's only one way to handle you. A gun. Oh, you fool, give me that. No, I'm warning you, Jeff, if you come any closer. You wouldn't shoot, darling. Jeffrey, let go of me. Put down that gun. You should let go of me. Oh, oh. Leslie, don't. Don't shoot again. No. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I fired and fired and until the gun was empty. Well, that's all, I guess. That is all? Yes. Yes, that's just the way it happened. I see. Well, I don't think that you have anything to fear, Mrs. Crosby. <sighs> we'll have you out of here very soon. Yes, Robert, of course. Yes. Well, as a matter of fact, my assistant, Chi Sang, is retyping my brief right now. No. No, we're absolutely prepared for the trial, and I'm sure that Leslie will be acquitted. That's right. Goodbye, Robert. Was that Mr. Crosby again? Yes, yes, that's right, Chi Sang. So upset, and after all, there's nothing to worry about. Except for this. Uh, this letter. What? What letter? This. It is a copy of one supposedly written by Mrs. Crosby. A strange man brought it. He suggests we might want to buy it. I think you had better read it, sir. Very well. Robert will be away for the night. I absolutely must see you. I shall expect you at 11. I am desperate. And if you don't come, I won't answer for the consequences. Don't drive up. Leslie. What the devil does this mean? It could mean any number of things. Why, this is nothing short of blackmail. Well, this is ridiculous. Do you think that Mrs. Crosby could have written such a letter? I don't know, Mr. Crosby. I can't believe this. Why, well, it must be a forgery. Who has the original? A Chinese woman who lived in Mr. Hammond's house. Oh, I see. If the original letter should be sent to the public prosecutor... But it's preposterous. Mrs. Crosby said that she hadn't written to Hammond for weeks before the shooting. If this letter is genuine... Well, I've got to find out. <laughs> George, surely you didn't come here to visit me in this horrible jail just to talk about Robert and his rubber plantation. Uh, Mrs. Crosby, I, uh, I think I should tell you that there exists a letter. A letter? Yes. In your handwriting to Jeff Hammond. <laughs> what of it? I've often sent him little notes to ask him to a party or a tennis match or something. Well, this letter asked him to come and see you because Robert was going to Singapore. Oh, that's impossible. I never wrote anything of a kind. Oh, well, here... Perhaps you'd better read it for yourself. Well, it's not my handwriting. It's said to be an exact copy of the original. Will you read it, please? Robert will be away for the night. I absolutely must see you. I shall expect you at 11. I'm desperate, and if you don't come, I... I won't answer for the consequences. Don't drive up. Leslie. I didn't write it. Now, be very careful of what you say. If the original is in your handwriting... You know, it would be useless to deny it. Now, look, Mr. Joyce, it's not even dated. If I had written it and forgotten all about it, it might have been written years ago. If, if you just give me time, now, you must give me time. Give me time to think, please. If the prosecution had this letter, they would cross-examine the boys who work on your plantation. They would soon find out whether someone took a letter to Mr. Hammond on the day of his death. Now, I swear to you that I didn't write that letter. How many times must I tell you I did not write that letter? Very well. 
If that's all you have to say, I think I'll be getting back to my office. Oh, just a minute, please. Yes? Mr. Joyce, what did the court think that letter meant? The court would know that you had told a deliberate lie. When? You have said that you had no communication with Hammond for at least three months. Well, it was such a shock. I can't remember every detail. Perhaps I did write the letter. Well, you admit it. Well, just a moment ago, you said... Well, surprise. I was preparing for Robert. His birthday's next month. I knew he wanted a new gun. I want to talk to Jeff about it. I thought I'd get him to order it for me. Perhaps you'd better read that letter again. No. No, I don't want to. It is not the sort of letter you'd write to consult someone about a gun. (laughs) Mrs. Crosby, please. I'm sorry. I'm all right. Mrs. Crosby, until now, this case was competitively plain sailing. This letter has thrown an entirely different complexion on everything. With it, the prosecution can prove that Hammond came to your house at your urgent invitation. Therefore, I must insist that you tell me everything to save your neck. You mean they'd hang me? Yes. If they came to the conclusion that you hadn't killed Hammond in self-defense. But what can they prove? I don't know what they can prove. You know. Mr. Joyce, why do you speak to me this way? After all, Mr. Joyce, I'm not a criminal. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No. 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 I'm sorry. All right, try it out. Don't, don't let them hang me, please. Will you pull yourself together, please? Just give me time. Just give me some time and let me think. I was Mrs. Crosby, I'm so I'll come no. back later. No. No, don't leave me. But I... Well? Well, Mrs. Crosby. Well, they... Well, whoever has the original letter, sell it? Why, yes, I think so. Who has it? Well, the Chinese woman who was living in Hammond's house. The Chinese woman? Does she want very much for it? Mm, I imagine she wants a very large sum. Mr. Joyce, are you going to let them hang me because of a paltry sum of money? What? Do you think it's so simple as all that to secure possession of that letter? Why, you have no right to make any such suggestion to me. Well, then what will happen to me? Well, you should have thought of that before. Justice must take its course. Oh, please, Mr. Joyce, please. I'm putting myself in your hands. I know that I have no right to ask you to do anything that isn't proper, but you must do everything you can to help me. Mr. Joyce, you're my counselor. Now, who else will help me? You've got to. You've got to help me, Mr. Joyce. Now, please. I'm getting down on my Mrs. knees. Crosby, Mr. Crosby, please, Joyce, please stop it. Could your husband raise the money? Yes, I'm sure he could. Well, you know that he'd have to be told what it was for. Yes, but does he have to see the letter? He's in love with me, Mr. George. He's making me sacrifice to save me. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not Robert, sure Robert, an I... old friend of yours. Now, I'm not asking you to do anything for me. I'm asking you to save a rather simple, kind man who never did you any harm from, from all the pain that's possible. Mrs. Crosby. All right. I'll help you. But on one condition... Yes. Now, you tell me the truth about the letter. Now, will you tell me the truth about that night? Oh, yes, yes, I will, I will. All right. Did you, or did you not shoot Hammond in self-defense? Well, of course it was in self-defense. I swear to you, Mr. Joyce, it was in self-defense. Now, you've got to believe me, you must help me. Please, Mr. Joyce, I'm placing my life in your hands. I wouldn't lie to you now, I wouldn't. Very well, Mrs. Crosby. I, um, I must go now. Mr. Joyce, what are you going to do? Do? I don't know. Why did they have to keep her in prison all these weeks? Everyone I've met in Singapore has told me the court will exonerate her. Oh, of course, Robert. There's no question about the verdict, except for one thing. Except for what? It appears that uh, your wife sent a letter to Hammond asking him to come to the bungalow on the night he was killed. A letter? Yes. But that's impossible. She's already said that she's had no communication with Hammond. Well, the fact remains that this letter exists. It's in the possession of the Chinese woman who lived in Hammond's house. I don't understand. 
Leslie sent a letter to Hammond. Well, uh, your wife meant to give you a present on your birthday, and she wanted Hammond to help her get it. This, this letter, what would it, what would it, uh, well, it would be very awkward if this letter found its way into the hands of the prosecution. You see, your wife lied, and she would be asked to explain this lie. It would make a difference if it were proven that Hammond did not intrude, but came to see your wife by invitation. I see. Well, uh, is there anything we can do? Uh, well, uh, we, we must get hold of that letter. Can we get it? Uh, we can buy it. How much? $10,000. Ten thousand. Yes. Well, that'll take about every cent I have. You can get it? Well, I, I'll have to get it. If you think it's absolutely necessary. It's the only way if you want your wife acquitted. But I, I still don't understand. Listen, Joyce. Listen. You say Leslie sent Hammond a letter to help her get a present for me. Yes. What was the present she wanted to give me? Oh, uh, well, I, I believe... Uh, she said she wanted to give you a new gun. A new gun? A new gun? Yeah. Hey, what's the matter? Robert, are you ill? Can I get you a glass of water, Albert? No, no. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm quite all right. When must you have the money? Ten o'clock tonight. Is the Chinese woman coming to you? No, I'm going to her. Oh, I'll bring the money. I'll come with you. Oh, well, you don't have to do that. I think it'd be better if you left me to deal with this matter by myself. It's my money, isn't it? I'm going with you. Mr. Joyce, Mr. Crosby, this is Lin Fo, the man who delivered the letter. Good evening. Uh, may I present Lao Tzu, friend of the late Mr. Hammond. Good evening, gentlemen. How do you do? Uh, now, Chi Sang, let's get down to business. After all, that's what we're here for. Uh, Lao Tzu, do you have the letter? Yes, Chi Sang. Then uh, let's get on with this. Here's the money, Chi Sang. Count it. You'll see that it's correct. Uh, yes, sir. Hurry, Chi Sang. Yes, it is correct. Here you are, Lao Tzu. Here is the money. Is everything all right? Never again will anything be right. Money is not like blood. To raise money is not difficult. To make a child, to raise a child to a man, that is difficult. The money will not change the blood. The blood will be there in the mind. So it is in her mind now. A wound in her mind. And this wound is a memory. This memory will grow, and the wound will consume her. Yes, so it is. Here is the letter. Thank you. This is the right document, Mr. Joyce. I'll take that. Yes, Mr. Crosby. Read what your wife wrote to Hammond. Robert will be away for the night. I absolutely must see you. I should expect you at 11. I am desperate... And if you don't come, I won't answer for the consequences. Don't drive up. Let it. Yeah, you'd better let me have it, Robert. No. no. I'm going to keep it myself. It's cost me enough money. Are you all right, Omar? Yes. Joyce, Leslie said that she sent that letter to Hammond to ask him to come and help her get a gun for me. Is that right? Yes, that's right. On the night of Hammond's death, I went to Singapore to buy a new gun. Leslie knew that. Good night, Joyce. And so, Mrs. Crosby, this court having found you not guilty, I congratulate you. You are once again a free woman. Joyce, I had to see but, you. I had to show you this. Oh, the letter. Where did you... Robert has left me. He gave me this. He knows. He knows? Uh, what does he know? He knows that Jeff and I loved each other. A wound that will never heal. What did you say? Nothing. Jeff and I loved each other for years. He was all my life. I loved him. 
Then I heard this Chinese woman was living in his house. I couldn't believe it at first. And then when I did believe it, I had to see him. That letter. We'd always been so careful. He always tore up any word I wrote to him. When he received my note, he came. I told him I knew about the Chinese woman. Don't believe it. It's a lie. I hated him then. I knew that he was lying. I insulted him. I called him names. At last, I turned on him. Shut up. I'm sick and tired of you. The truth is, I never want to see you again. You bore me. Is it true about her and a Chinese woman? Yes, it's true. I think I began to go crazy when he said that. I'm glad you know now. I never loved you. Now maybe you'll leave me alone. Don't bother me anymore. I don't quite know what happened then. There was a revolver on the desk. Robert had left it there when he went away. I meant to take it in my room with me. Now I seized the revolver, and before I knew what I was doing, I fired him. He gave a cry, and I saw that I'd hit him. He staggered and rushed to the rand. I ran after him and fired again. He fell, and then I stood over him, and I fired him and fired him. Till the revolver was empty. I knew there were no more cartridges. Well, what do you want me to do, Mrs. Crosby? Do? What can anyone do? Don't you hear what the judge said? I'm free. Free. Free to live alone in that bungalow and that lonely estate. Free to do without Jeffrey and without Robert. Free to be a prisoner all my life. Prisoner of my own conscience. Free to remember until the day I die. Why didn't they hang me? There you have Somerset Maugham's dramatic story, The Letter. Tonight's performance in a mystery playhouse. This is Peter Laurie. Closing the doors of the mystery playhouse. Good night. Sleep tight. Radio Service.